Yesterday I was watching Logan, which by the way is an awesome movie that I strongly recommend. And I started to think about the many Wolverine games throughout the years. A small conversation with some friends later and I got really inspired to reminisce on the best Wolverine games ever made. For a character that has lived as long as Logan, there's a dark side to his past. Especially when it comes to the combined curses of movie-based, superhero-based and comic-based video games. But for now, let's not think about that and focus on the best the Canadian slasher had to offer to gamers over the years. This is my top 10 Wolverine games. Number 10. X-Men. Sega. The first entry in this list is a 1993 game developed by Western Technologies and published by Sega for the Mega Drive, aka Genesis. And this was one tough game, so much that I never actually got to finish the damn thing. Players could switch between Wolverine, Cyclops, Gambit and Nightcrawler as they would go through the multiple danger room simulations of famous X-Men locales. In particular, the lighthouse stage was quite memorable for its number of X-Men clones that would randomly appear to attack. And it was also remembered for the surprise gas fight in the attic with Apocalypse. Logan's claws were retractable in this game and they would drain a special meter when out, meaning the player had to be cautious about when to use it. Interestingly enough, after defeating Mojo in level 5, you would see computer codes filling up the screen like a system error. The screen would then say, reset the machine, signalizing that the player should perform a soft reset on their consoles. Number 9. X-Men Mutant Apocalypse Capcom This game happens to be the first game produced by a long and fruitful partnership between Capcom and Marvel. In Mutant Apocalypse, players must choose to play as one of the five X-Men and liberate fellow mutants being held at the mutant prison camp of Genosha. The character's abilities may have been fairly limited in hindsight compared to other titles in this list, but Mutant Apocalypse was a solid, action-packed side-scrolling adventure and was the first X-Men title to have Psylocke as a playable character. A particularly interesting side note is that this game required you to perform special attacks by imputing a joystick combination, like in a fighting game instead of using a button, like most action games. Number 8. X-Men 2 Clone Wars Sega Sega ups up the end from the previous X-Men game by adding in three more playable characters and by expanding upon the gameplay mechanics. Wolverine and the team have additional moves they are able to perform, and each mutant plays significantly different and unique compared to each other. Volvi and Xavier Squad team up with Magneto in order to stop the Phalanx, a cybernetic species that tries to force and convert all organic life into their techno-organic collective. A cybernetic army might sound impressive, but I'm pretty sure they're not a Dementium proof. The first level of this game was especially memorable, as you were thrown into a snowy battle immediately after turning on the console, controlling a random X-Man. Only after completing this first challenge you would then be able to select the mutant you want to use for the next level. Number 7. Wolverine Adamantium Rage Acclaim LGN Adamantium Rage stories starts off the way any decent Wolverine story should. Logan gets a cryptic message from an unknown person with information hinting on his past. He leaves Xavier's school for gifted youngsters, despite Jean, Rogue, Jubilee and Storm's warning. He drives out to the coordinates given and, of course, he ends up in a hidden military installation in Canada. This place turns out to be the site of the Weapon X program, the place where Logan's bones were infused with adamantium. Wolverine ends up cutting through Sabretooth, Lady Deathstrike, Bloodscream and Shinobi Shaw in his quest to learn the truth. A unique thing about adamantium rage was that the Genesis version was much more action-oriented, with more attack variations, but the SNES edition allowed Wolverine to climb walls with his claws for sake of stealth and avoidance. Number 6. Wolverine's Revenge – Activision X2 Wolverine's Revenge showed us that Mr. Luke Skywalker, aka the Joker himself, Mark Hamill, is able to pull off a great Wolverine. The console versions of Wolverine's Revenge were fairly mediocre, though we did have some decent combat, stealth, tracking mechanics and badass stealth kills. But the Game Boy Advance Edition was a great hack and slash title with smooth graphics, tight controls and excellent hit detection. The ability to pull off stealth kills may have not been as excellent as it was in the console editions, but this GBA game was much better than its big budget counterparts. Number 5. X-Men Konami If you are old enough to see people crowding around this arcade cabinet, then you remember how awesome it was when you first saw it. Arcade goers were accustomed to cram countless quarters into Konami's line of beat em ups, but X-Men was the first and only game with a double wide cabinet to accept payment from 6 marks at once. The action was nearly identical to predecessors like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and The Simpsons, but now you could play with two more friends. In an era before massive multiplayer online play, where even four simultaneous players were a rarity, the appeal of this could not be overstated. 
The biggest problem was maybe the arguments between friends as to who would get to control Wolverine and who had to play with Dazzler. Number 4. X-Men Legends 2 Rise of the Apocalypse Activision X-Men Legends 2 was supposed to be a joint effort between the X-Men with their old adversaries, Magneto's Brotherhood of Mutants, uniting in arms to take out the forces of Apocalypse. Despite having an array of 15 different mutants to play from, with about a dozen more NPC mutants, Wolverine appears to be the frontman of the entire joint operation. X-Men Legends 2 had a perfect balance of action, RPG elements and Diablo-esque gameplay to keep most of us thoroughly entertained all the way through Apocalypse Demise. Number 3. Marvel Ultimate Alliance Activision Take Marvel's entire dream team, basically every major superhero you would possibly want to appear in the next Avengers movie, and put them all into a game using the X-Men Legends 2 format and on a more powerful system. The resulting experience is not only heaven for Marvel fanboys, but an amazing expansion beyond X-Men Legends 2. Again, with Thor, Captain America, Iron Man and Spider-Man on the same boat, Wolverine takes the spotlight for many of the cutscenes and is a fan favorite because of his personality, stronger melee strikes and health regeneration. Number 2. X-Men Origins Wolverine Activision Although this movie was a pile of shit, ironically, X-Men Origins Wolverine was the superhero game we have been waiting for most of our lives. After failure and failure of so many horrific movie superhero comic based titles, Origins finally got it right. You take Wolverine, slap on an M rating and watch the blood fly. Nothing is more impressive than watching old James Hollett getting shot at a dozen times, leaping onto the front of a helicopter, pulling the pilot through the windshield and watching Logan throw the pilot's body into the chopper's propellers as his bullet wounds are healing on his body. It is the best hack and slash experience you could ever have as Wolverine. And a hack and slash experience is all you could hope from from the guy who is the best there is in what he does. Number 1. X-Men Children of the Atom Capcom Yeah, I know what you're thinking. What about Wolverine in Marvel vs. Capcom 1, 2, 3? Well, Children of the Atom is the fighter that started it all. Capcom created Children of the Atom by recreating Street Fighter 2 with characters from X-Men. It was such a success that the roster's entire repertoire of moves and sound bites were reused in six different franchise crossover fighting games until Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Somehow, Capcom was able to get the voice actors from the animated series to do the sound bites for each character, which I'm sure was epic for anyone that grew up with it. Before each of Adam's characters were recycled and tweaked for each sequential crossover title, Children of the Atom was uncomplicated, experimentally bold and downright fun. And for these reasons, I consider X-Men Children of the Atom to take the throne of my list of 10 best Wolverine games. So, what do you think? What are the best Wolverine games ever made? And have you watched Logan yet? Let us know what you think in the comments and subscribe for more videos. I'll see you guys later.